to Christy's Bits of Wisdom podcast. I'm your host, Christy. My goal is to help you start your mornings off right by sharing a short story or a parable that will motivate and encourage you to live your best life with God. By using the infinite wisdom found in His Word, you truly can live a life of happiness and peace in Christ. I'm leaving proof. I hope you'll stick around and subscribe. Also, if you like what you hear, please share with your friends and family so they can scoop up some bits of wisdom for themselves. Hey, you guys. Good morning and happy Wednesday. I hope you had a really good Tuesday. Um, I know I did, and I hope you'll have an even better Wednesday. I just always say that every day, like, you know, just hope that this day will be better than yesterday. Even if yesterday was fantastic, I hope today will be fantastic times 10. <laughs> But anyway, um, I want to title today's episode, Placing Blame and Lack of Accountability. (laughs) And uh, that's a really huge thing in today's society. So I want to try to break this down as quick as possible. I I don't want it to be as long as Monday's episode. Um, I think that one was like right at 20 minutes. But anyway, I want to tell you a little story about myself and where blame and lack of accountability uh, played a part. So a few years ago, I got this big crazy notion that I wanted to get in shape and slim down for the new year. Um, And that is, I know it's like really cliche, like that's the number one uh, resolution at the end of every December is to work out, eat healthy, and just, you know, improve your overall well-being you know, your physical well-being. Um, And I had even looked that up and I read in a survey um, from a very prominent fitness chain in America that memberships actually spike 10.4%. They spiked 10.4% in the month of January 2019 than they did from January 2018. So, um, I guess they do that kind of every year. I don't know. They spike a little bit, but that was the um, earliest uh, survey I could find or the most recent, I want to say. But it seems like I'm not alone in my attempts to want to get healthier at the beginning of the year. I don't know what it is that we feel that pressure. Why don't we feel that through the year? Why is it only, why do we only feel that in December? I'm going to have to like look that up and see what that phenomenon is known as. (laughs) But anyway. Um, well, it worked for a while for me, and I found a diet plan that I felt like I could live with, and I got um, the necessary equipment that I needed, like I got some small weights and a Fitbit, um, I got some new running shoes, um, I got a yoga mat, and I even scheduled time in my um, days um, for my workouts, um, so I could do them, because I felt like if I had everything together and had a plan, that I was more apt to stick to it, and uh you know, just really do it. Um, so I set out with this big grand intention of getting in shape, <laughs> or maybe I should say a grand delusion instead. <laughs> that was probably more like it. <laughs> but anyway, like so many people, I failed miserably. I mean, I started out really strong. You know, I held my own for a couple of weeks. I was really into it. I was going to do it. And then boom, I just quit. And I just quit. And What were the reasons I quit? Well, because I found myself staying hungry. I didn't want to work out. I hate working out. Like, I hate working out, especially if it's cardio. I don't mind, you know, going for a walk or um, actually just kind of going for a walk. I don't mind going for a walk, but anything else, I hate it. I don't mind yoga either. Um, I always enjoyed yoga because that that really relaxed me. But anything other than that, I hated it. Um, And I... And I was um, aggravated because I felt like I had made this promise to myself to change. Um, And then it was almost like I felt resentment every day from having to do what I was having to do. So what did I do? I quit. (laughs) I went back to eating my junk food. I went back to not walking. I went back to drinking my pop and living my normal, overall, unhealthy, a very unhealthy life. And why did I do that? Why did I quit and go back? Well, it's pretty simple. Because I wanted to. Because I wanted to. I didn't want to do 
I didn't want to do right. I didn't want, it was too hard to do right. And I wanted, I wanted to quit. So I have found this one thing uh, to be true in life. And it's that we all do what we want to do. I mean, we do what we want to do. When I was in my mid twenties, I wanted to get in shape. Um, after I had my son, I was almost 24 when I had him. And um, I only, I had only gained like 36 pounds but it put me up to um, 157. And so after I had him, I thought, man, I want to get in shape, improve my health. And so I did the same thing, as I said in the beginning. I found a diet plan, I bought the stuff, and I made a schedule. But that time, I stuck to it. It took me nine months, but I lost 45 pounds. And I did it. I did yoga. I walked all the time. And I felt better. I, I was in the best shape of my life then, and I felt better. Um, my body was what it should have been, and my health was great. I was sleeping really good, um, but I had my mindset to doing what I wanted to do, and I did it. So why did I quit this last time? Why did I fail at it? Was it my fault, or was it somebody else's? What if I told you what really happened the day that I fell off the wagon, <laughs> so to speak. Well, I was doing great. And two weeks in, I had been chugging water like I had never been before. I was just drinking almost a gallon of water a day, which I know that's not real great for you either because the more water, like there you get to a certain point. And I've always read that women shouldn't drink like a gallon a day. Now, some people will tell you that's false that you should, but women shouldn't really drink that much. I had started to retain it. My ankles were swelling a little bit, but, um, but I was eating my fruits and my vegetables, the ones that I like, and I was lifting my weights. And then one day I had went out with a friend to a restaurant to have lunch <laughs> and I ordered green beans with no butter, carrots, and a piece of lean chicken. I mean, grilled chicken all the way. When I'm on a diet, it's grilled chicken all the way. <laughs> um, but my friend ordered country fried steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, extra cornbread, and mac and cheese. <laughs> I mean, I, was, I thought I was going to die. When I saw them bring her food and then I saw mine, I thought I was going to die. And for dessert, she got a huge piece of chocolate cake with fudge icing and ice cream. So it's not too hard to guess where we were, Cracker Barrel. <laughs> so, but anyway, my mouth began to drool just looking over at her plate. I mean, I wanted what was on her plate. And, and I got, I found myself where I was not able to concentrate on anything the entire time that we were eating. I wasn't able to concentrate on what she was saying. I couldn't think of what I wanted to say. All I could do was just look at her food. I wanted it so bad. And I picked at my food and I pushed it around on the plate while I coveted hers. And I just wanted so badly to reach over with my fork and just take a huge bite of her mashed potatoes. But I didn't. But I managed to get a few, bite of my, a few bites of mine down. And then I pushed back my plate in irritation. I was just, I was just upset. And by the end of lunch, I felt so much aggravation and anger because I hadn't eaten what I wanted that had put me in a bad mood. So we both went back to work and finished out the day. And once I got home, though, I went to my cabinet and grabbed some cookies that I had hidden from myself or tried to pretend like I had. <laughs> and I ate an entire row and drank an entire bottle of pop. And it felt so good. It really did feel so good. I knew what I was doing was wrong and I was ruining my diet plan, but it felt good. It tasted heavenly and I enjoyed every single bite of it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I enjoyed it. But once I was done, I immediately felt guilty. I was ashamed of myself for eating that. I knew it was bad for me and I wanted to hide and cry because the guilt I felt was immense. I was a failure and I couldn't deal with it. I mean, I had this plan. I was going to get in shape. I was going to lose weight. You know, I went and got all this stuff. I spent money on all this stuff and then I failed. And I was, I just felt guilt and I, I just couldn't deal with it. So I looked at myself in the mirror and I was really disappointed. I saw 
I saw somebody who had let herself down and I couldn't handle it. So I went to bed that night feeling like I couldn't do anything right. For some reason, when we fail in one area, it causes us to feel like our whole life is a failure. I mean, it does me. And I'm sure that we're kind of all alike. So I'd venture to say that you guys that are listening have probably felt like that as well. I mean, I failed at a diet. Big deal, right? Just start over again the next day. No, I let it kind of take me over. And I felt like I was a complete failure in every area. Um, So I woke up the next morning and I made up my mind that I was not going to let my friend influence me anymore by what she chose to have for lunch. I mean, I was a little upset, like how dare she order all that food when I couldn't have any, right? It was her fault after all, right? It was her fault that I failed on my diet. She knew I couldn't eat all that stuff and there she was having all that in front of me. Was it my friend's fault that I didn't stick to my diet? Of course it wasn't. I was responsible for eating the cookies. I was responsible for making the choice not to only have one, but to eat the entire row. That was my decision. But it felt so much better to blame her. It felt easier to put the accountability on her instead of myself. Because if I did that, then I wouldn't have to feel ashamed and I wouldn't have to feel like a failure. There. I'd found a way out of feeling bad about what I'd done. I found a way to get the shame out of the sin of doing what I knew I should not have done. Now, was failing on my diet a sin? No, but I'm trying to make a point. So does any of this sound familiar? Because especially in today's society, there seems to be no accountability for what anything that anyone does. It seems as if men and women cannot cope with their own shortcomings, and so they find a way to blame others for what they do wrong. I once knew a man who was extremely violent to the woman he was dating. He would hit her and then blame her. And he would say, if you wouldn't act like that, then I wouldn't have to treat you that way. He couldn't cope with his own actions. And so he put the reason for his bad behavior onto her, even though it wasn't her fault. He couldn't handle the responsibility of being a person who behaved badly. So he deflected the blame onto her. And the world today does the exact same thing when it comes to sin. We are all born with something in us that knows right from wrong. And I can prove it. It started with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. When they became aware of their nakedness after eating the forbidden fruit. um, Well, so see, they started out naked, and but they didn't know they were naked. And so God told them, you can eat from here and here and here, but don't eat from that tree. They did. Here come the serpent. He beguiled Eve. She ate. Adam's like, what are you doing? She goes, here, have a bite. It's good. God told me not to. I'll do it anyway. Go ahead. So he took a bite and then boom, their eyes were open and they realized they were naked. So then they were like, oh, we are in trouble. So they hid from God. <laughs> so so they, they the, the Bible said their eyes were open and they saw their sin. But instead of acknowledging that they had sinned and going to God and saying, hey, we messed up, they covered it up. So they went and found some leaves and they sewed them up together and they put them on. And so when God and so the Bible tells us that God um, would visit Adam every evening, that God, God would walk with Adam in the cool of the, uh, the cool of the day in the evenings. He would walk with him through the Garden of Eden. And so when God came to visit him in the garden that day, that evening, Adam hid from him. And that's found in Genesis 3, 8. And so after uh, after they had made a covering for themselves, because they knew that they were naked, they knew what they'd done, um, God confronted them on the subject. <laughs> and so Eve blamed it on the serpent. Adam tried to blame Eve. So see, nobody wanted to be accountable. Eve was like, you know, Adam was like, well, she made me do it. It's not my fault. She made me do it. <laughs> she made me eat. Kind of like, I said with my friend, well, she shouldn't have ordered all that food. And then Eve was like, well, he made me do it, blaming it on the serpent. But you know what? It was their fault because God told them, he told them for, for himself, right from his own lips, don't eat of that tree. And they did anyway. They finally told God the truth of what they'd done. They finally accepted responsibility for their own actions. 
but they both suffered the consequences of their decision too. I mean, we all know what happened. You know, God made Adam to have to work. I think the Bible says something like, you know, you'll earn your living by the sweat of your brow. And so he made him to have to work and that's why we have to work. And then, and then Eve, he made Eve um, travail in childbirth, be in pain. Thanks, Eve. <laughs> um, but anyway, we do the same things in our lives. We know right from wrong. Even if we say we don't, we do because it, we're born with that in us. There is a voice and that voice is the Holy Spirit and it is inside of us. And it tells us when sin is wrong. It tells us that sin is wrong. And it tells us when we do wrong. But for some reason, we ignore it and go on anyway and do what we want to do. And that's why we ignore it. Because we do what, we're doing what we want to do. We're doing what feels good. But when faced with the sin, then what do we do? When we're finally found out and busted, what do we do then? Well, we try to blame others for it. Like Adam, we'll find somebody else to put the blame on. We'll say, well, it's not my fault I did it. It was so-and-so. And so-and-so -so caused me to behave that way. And so-and-so, -so, you know, did this. And it sounds like that abusive man that I spoke about earlier. It's always somebody else's fault. It's never his. It's always, you know, my sister made me mad. That's why I'm doing this. Or, you know, you made me mad. But I have recently found that this trend seems to have taken a stronghold on... <laughs> Most of America, really, probably probably the world, but I don't go out in the world. I don't go all over the world. I'm here in America, so I see it here. Um, I hear people say that they're not serving God because how Christians are intolerant. <laughs> so they want to blame their own sins on somebody else's actions by saying, well, he or she doesn't agree with my behavior, so that means they hate me, and that's why I'm not a Christian. They seem to be using this excuse so much more lately. And it's really sad. It's sad because first and foremost, it's not true. It's a flat out lie from the enemy. And what's really sad is that it will not hold up on Judgment Day. You see, you can blame other people all you want for your own actions. You can say, it was her who caused me to quit my diet. Or it was him who caused me to not want to go to church in an effort to take away the guilt of your wrongdoing. Because that makes you it makes you feel better about yourself. It makes you feel better. When you lie down at night, you'd be like, well, you know, that was their fault. It wasn't really my fault. So you don't have to deal with, uh, you know, feel, the, the guilty feelings that you have. But in truth, your sin is your own doing. And blaming others is just the diversionary tactic used to relieve yourself of the pain of failing God. You can do that in your life if that's what you choose. But you also have to remember with that action of blaming others and not accepting accountability or taking accountability for your sin also comes the consequences of that sin. There's a time when we all have to be held accountable for what we do. The phrase, you reap what you sow, is overused at times, but it's still very much the truth. We all will be held to God's standard and the standard of his word on the day when we stand before him. Now, I'm not using this podcast episode to discourage anybody, but I really want to encourage you to look at yourself the next time you feel the need to place accountability or responsibility for your actions, your sins, and your shortcomings onto somebody else. Examine yourself and say, was this really me or was this somebody else? And if it was you, if you figure out that it was you, take accountability for it. Take responsibility and repent and ask the Lord to help you not to do that again. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a little bit longer <laughs> like the other one was. But if you like it and you're listening to it on YouTube, um, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel, like it, and leave a comment. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow.